Scissor, sister, scissor, wife Please, my mother, drop your knife It can result to a loss of a life Do not violate a right Oh, my daddy, is a right Do not force that to a knife Good day, viewers and listeners My name is Maria Majum I am happy to welcome you to our virtual learning class on gender-based violence. This program is brought to you by the Network Against Gender-Based Violence in partnership with Action Aid International of the Gambia with funding from Amplify Change. Class 5 will be presented by Ali Ujiba, who will take us through the Domestic Violence Act and the Sexual Violence Act, respectively. Hello, our wonderful viewers and listeners. This is class on sexual Offenses Act 2013 and the Domestic Violence Act 2013. I am Ali Ujiba. Um, first, we will look at the background of the Sexual Offenses Act. The Act was um, assented by the President on the 30th of December 2013. Um, the Act has 20 sections highlighting two criminal offenses, namely rape and defilement. Um, for the purpose of this presentation, attention will be centered on the offenses and the legal consequences the attract. Um, to look at the application of the Act, the provisions of this Act shall apply to the trial of rape and other sexual offenses under, the, under this Act and, and other enactment. Um, this is um, cited pursuant to section, section 1, subsection 2 of the Sexual Offenses Act 2013. Um, the Sexual Offenses Act 2013 repeals the following section, that is section 121, 122, 123, 127, 128 and 130 of the uh, criminal code. Um, mind me, back in the days when, when persons are found one thing of committing the offense of rape, they are charged pursuant to the set sections of the criminal code. That is section 121, 122, 123, 127 and 128 and 130 respectively. Um, now, to, before delving deep into the uh, presentation on the offenses and the penalties that they attract, it is important that we look at key definitions as per the Act. Um, one important definition is what constitutes a child or what is the meaning of a child under the Act. A child according to the Act means a person under the age of 18, 18 years of age, um, though there exist different um, age ranges for different offenses, example the sexual activity uh, with a child under the age of 16, which we would look at when we are dealing with defilement. Um, another important definition is sexual act. Sexual act, according to the, um, the Act, means the insertion to even the slightest degree of the penis into another person's um, vagina, anus, or mouth. And the insertion of any part of the body of an animal or object into another person's would also constitute a um, uh, um, um, sexual act. Like the insertion of any part of the body of an animal or any object into another person's vagina or anus. So it does not only stop at uh, um, um, inserting it into the mouth, anus or vagina. It could also mean the insertion of any part of the body of an animal or an object into another person's vagina or anus. Except, there is an exception to this, except it is consistent with sound medical practice for proper medical purposes. Left the way it is, like to say the insertion of any other part of the body of an animal or any object into another person's mouth, then uh, um, um, this would also uh, um, capture the issues of um, when it comes to medical practitioners who in their course of work might use objects. So that is why the exception comes off. To say where, where it is in line with sound medical practice for proper medical purposes. It also, by definition, the definition also continues to show any form of genital simulation, any form of genital simulation will also constitute a sexual act. Having said that, we will proceed to look at what constitutes consent. Consent, by definition, is the voluntary agreement or acquiescence by a person of age or with requisite mental capacity who is not under duress or coercion and usually who has knowledge or understanding. Um, it could also mean it is, it is given or that is to say it is given through words or overt actions. In a context of sex, it means a freely given agreement to sexual intercourse or other sexual contact. Um, it is important to note at this point that a child under the age of 18 cannot consent to sexual activity. Um, it is also important for us to clarify this issue because uh, most often than not, people will be like, because the girl does not resist or the, because there is an orgasm, it will be taken as consent. No, we are saying here that reason of, lack, reason of silence or lack of physical resistance on the part of the complainant or reason of sexual arousal including orgasm and ejaculation does not constitute consent and cannot be inferred to mean consent. 
um, we will further continue to look at what, what the, the, the definition of the vagina. Um, the vagina includes any part of the female genital organs. It includes any part of the female genital organs. Um, rape, like we said, is one of the offenses under the Act. Um, and then it's defined pursuant to Section 3 of the Sexual Offenses Act. Now, pursuant to the said section, the offense is committed where a person, the accused person in court, who intentionally, under coercive circumstances, one, engages in sexual act with another person, the complainant, or two, causes the complainant to engage in sexual act with the perpetrator or a third person, or a third person. At this point, uh, uh, um, causes the complainant to engage in sexual act with the perpetrator or a third person. If any person does any of the acts stated, it will constitute the offense of rape. Um, at this point, it is important we define what, we, what is the meaning of coercive circumstances as per the definition of rape under Section 3. Um, coercive circumstances means, one, the application of physical force to the complainant or another person. Where physical force is applied to the complainant or another person, it constitutes one limb of coercive circumstance. Coercive circumstance could also mean threat, verbal or conduct of the application of physical force to the complainant or another person. Three, threat to cause harm other than GBH, that is grievous bodily harm, to the complainant or another under circumstances where it is not reasonable for the person to disregard the threat, e.g. the threat of a calamity. And um, four, where the complainant is under the age of 16. Five, circumstances where the complainant is unlawfully detained, where the complainant is unlawfully detained, such would also amount to cause of circumstances. Cause of circumstances for the extent uh, uh, to circumstances where the complainant is affected by physical disability or helplessness, mental incapacity or other inability, whether permanent or temporary, um, intoxication, liquor or any, or any drug or other substance which mentally incapacitates the complainant. Um, sleep to the extent that the complainant is rendered incapable of understanding the nature of the sexual act or deprived of the opportunity to communicate unwillingness to submit or commit the sexual act. Seven, inducement, whether verbally or through conduct, by the perpetrator or by some other person to the knowledge of the perpetrator to believe that the perpetrator or the other person with whom sexual act is being committed is some other person. Um, fraudulent misrepresentation of some fact by the perpetrator or on the path of some other person to the knowledge of the perpetrator. Um, it also continues to say circumstances where the presence of more than one person is used to intimidate the complainant. This uh, um, um, instances that are listed would amount to coercive circumstances under the Sexual Offenses Act. It is important to note at this point as well that for the purposes of this section, that is Section 3, rape does not apply to marital couples, to married couples. Um, that is to say, there is no marital rape in our jurisdiction yet. Um, we will proceed to look at the second limb, like I said, the, the offenses and then the, the penalties that they attract. Now, this uh, um, pursuant to Section 4 of the Sexual Offences Act, it deals with the, the, the penalty for the offence of rape. Now, it says um, different jail terms ranging from less than 10 years to life imprisonment depending on circumstances under which the offence is committed or involved during the commission of the offence shall apply to uh, uh, um, rape um, offences. Now, the following slides uh, um, will deal with the penalties in detail. Um, in, case of the first, in case of first conviction, a jail term of less than of less than 10 years will apply where rape is committed under any of the following circumstances. Um, first, that is threat to cause harm, other than bodily harm, to the complainant. Where, where, where you are a first time offender and then you use threat to cause harm, other than uh, bodily harm, to the complainant. Or, circumstances where the complainant is under the age of 16. Or, complainant with physical disability and mental disorder, intoxication, sleep, inducement, fraudulent misrepresentation, intimidation by more than one person it would attract a jail term of less than 10 years. A jail term of less than 10 years. Now, less than 15 years is also a jail term that, uh, that is applied in rape, uh, um, rape cases or rape offenses. Now, a jail term of less than 15 years will apply where rape is committed under the following, where it is committed under any of the following circumstances. First, that is the application of physical force, the direct application of physical force. Secondly, threats of the application of physical force. This could be by, 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 by words. Um, the, the third one is the complainant is unlawfully detained. Where the complainant is unlawfully detained, you use threats of the application of physical force or you succeed in applying physical force, it would attract a jail term of not less than, a jail term of not less than 
15 years. Uh, we will proceed to say the, to look at the last component, which is the, the life imprisonment aspect of it. Um, life imprisonment will apply where rape is committed under any of the following circumstances. First, that is the complainant suffered GBH or mental harm. GBH means um, grievous bodily harm. Secondly, where the complainant is under the age of 13 years, that is by reason of age, exceptionally vulnerable. And then um, it also continues to say the co where the complainant is under 18 and the perpetrator is the parent, guardian or caretaker of the complainant. Um, the, the, the other aspect of it also deals with where the convicted person is infected with STDs at the time of rape. He knows that he is infected with STD at the time of rape. Co the, 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 the last component is convicted person uses firearms or a weapon. Um, where a person uses a firearm or a weapon, the convicted person, uh, the, the convicted person is infected with STDs, uh, the, person, the, 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 the complainant is under the age of 18, and the perpetrator is the parent guardian or caretaker of the complainant. Um, the, the complainant is under the age of 13 years, or the complainant suffers GBA, then it will attract a mandatory life imprisonment. imprisonment. Um, having looked at rape as the first component in the Sexual Offences Act, I will proceed to look at the second uh, aspect of it, which constitutes um, uh, uh, defilement. That is, and then defilement, there is an age bracket, that is the distinguishing factor between defilement and rape. Now, it says defilement, um, um, defilement is defined as by the act as a person who unlawfully has canon knowledge of a girl between the ages of 16 and 18. A person who unlawfully has canon knowledge of a girl between the ages of 16 and 18 commits the offense termed defilement and is liable on conviction to imprisonment imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years. Um, so um, by and large, um, that is the presentation on the Sexual Offenses Act. Um, like we said, we dealt with um, um, sexual, uh, um, the Sexual Offenses Act, um, which deals with rape and then defilement. Having said that, we will now proceed to look at the second component of the presentation, which deals with domestic violence. Now, domestic violence, as per the Act, that is the Domestic Violence Act 2013, um, um, is defined pursuant to Section um, um, 15 of the Act as engaging in the following within the context of previous or existing domestic relationship. Any act which constitutes a threat or harm to a person under the Criminal Code, Car 10 1, or specific act threat to commit acts to result in. Now, domestic violence, precisely what it means, what, what it regulates is, it regulates relationships that are domestic or akin to domestic relationships. Now, um, the, the, the said acts are physical abuse, namely physical assault or use of physical force against another person, including the forcible confinement or detention of another person, and the deprivation of, an, of another person of access to adequate food, water, clothing, shelter, or subjecting another person to torture or other cruel, inhuman, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. Now, it also proceeds to say it also involves sexual abuse, including rape, incest, and defilement, economic abuse and emotional abuse, verbal or psychological abuse, namely any conduct that makes another person feel constantly unhappy, miserable, ridiculed, afraid, jittery, or depressed to feel inadequate or worthless. Thus, what can be deduced from this definition that according to the Gambia's legal point of view, domestic violence occurs in four broad ways, that is physical, sexual, economic, and emotional. Um, the definition for a continuous, according to the Domestic Violence Act 2013, domestic relationship means relations that are akin to family relationships or relationships in a domestic situation that exists or has existed between complainant and an alleged offender. Includes a relationship where the complainant, where the complainant is or has been married to the alleged offender, live with the alleged offender in a relationship in the nature of a marriage, notwithstanding that they are not were not married to each other or could not or cannot be married to each other, um, is engaged is engaged to the alleged offender, that is they are engaged, causing the alleged offender in an actual or passive romantic intimate or cordial relationship, not necessarily sexual relationship with the alleged offender. So it does not necessarily have to be sexual um, relationship. Um, it also means uh, uh, um, the alleged offender shares or shares the same residence or a continence. Like we said, it, also, it, it does not only stop at family level. It could be, you, you, the, the, the domestic relationship could exist as a result of uh, being co in one property or living together, or the complainant is the house help in the household of the alleged offender. Like the issue of house help, be it house help 
in uh, when, when it comes to with deals with domestic chores or other things or you could be a gardener or a gatekeeper in the said uh, 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 compound now section 17 of the domestic violence act 2013 prohibits or criminalize prohibits criminalizes and provide punishment for anyone that is involved in domestic violence act in any form of domestic violence act now pursuant to section 17 2 a person in a domestic relationship who engaged in domestic violence commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding fifty thousand dollars or to a term of imprisonment not exceeding two years or both now what this means is where one is found one thing of committing any of this form of domestic violence and is liable on conviction the the the, the, the magistrate or the judge as the case may be might impose a fine not exceeding fifty thousand dollars on the person or as an alternative to the fine might send the individual to uh, a prison term of not exceeding two years or both might apply that is the fine and the imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years um to proceed further section 17.3 says that the court may in addition to imposing a fine or a prison term order that the offender in the case of domestic violence to pay compensation to the victim as the court may determine so it does not only stop at imposing the jail term and the fine or, or applying both the jail term and the fine the court the court might also order that the uh, um, the offender as the case may be to pay a compensation to the um, victim as the court may determine uh, in accordance with the circumstances of the case and um, so to conclude with um it is important for us to realize that domestic violence is no more private or family or a family affair but a criminal act no one has the right to inflict any form of violence on a person because you are family it is tried to underscore that we are living in hard times where we are all confined to our homes however it is important that children and women are the most vulnerable class of society and as such during this time our efforts in, in fighting COVID-19 shouldn't overshadow our sacred responsibility of making sure that women and children are protected from this existing realities of sexual violence and domestic violence when we come across um, um, sexual violence or domestic violence the best thing that we should do as responsible citizens is to make sure that we report the matter to the doorsteps of the nearest police stations. Thank you all. I am Aisha Tujala, the acting coordinator of the GAS agenda. The government of the Gambia enacted the Sexual Offenses Act 2013 and the Domestic Violence Act 2013 to combat sexual and domestic violence in the Gambia. Therefore, it is for the common good that all should respect and support the enforcement of these laws by maintaining zero tolerance for sexual and gender-based violence. Let's maintain social distance and report cases of sexual violence and domestic violence to the nearest police station to be safe with our families. Sister, 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 wife, please, my mother, drop your knife. It can result to a loss of a life. Do not violate a right. Oh, my daddy, is a right. Do not force that to annihilate my wife.